Welcome to another episode of Not Your Average Lives. Today's episode, I'm going to talk about something that I found that I learned about. I attended a webinar uh, and learned about a couple of pages on Facebook and a couple of Facebook groups that are all about connecting with like-minded people over 50. And since I learned about it and I like to share what I learned, I am very excited about these groups. I joined these groups, they're private groups, and I followed the pages. So I'm going to share with you what they are, and you might want to join them, follow the pages and join the groups, because the content that's being posted, these groups are very active. Well, first of all, let me talk about the pages first. So if you aren't familiar with what a Facebook page is and how that's different than a Facebook profile, I didn't know any of this stuff until, until I started to have a business online. And then I, I, then I got a Facebook business page. So how that's different is a profile page is your regular Facebook page. So when you create a Facebook account, you have a Facebook profile. And so that's a personal page and you have friends and you connect with friends. You can have uh, your Facebook profile be public and share it to everybody, which most people don't because it's not safe really to do that. Uh, you should know who you should, you should, in my opinion, uh, it's better to have it closed and then just have friends. So that, that is your Facebook. That's what most people know as Facebook. And, and so some content you can share publicly. I think now when I started, it was all or nothing. Now you can take certain posts and make them public and certain posts and make them private only to your friends. Where a page comes into play is companies have Facebook pages so Facebook pages, usually some people have their name as a Facebook page, which kind of is confusing because your profile is supposed to be your name, but some people, their business and their brand is their name. And for me, my brand is not your average grandma. So I have a Facebook page. It's not your average grandma. My, my personal private Facebook, although I have, have, because I created, I made at some point my profile page public because I was kind of using it as a business, which you're not supposed to do on Facebook, but I did this years ago when I was a beach body coach. So I'm pretty public and that's fine with me on my profile page. If you don't have a business, I would say stay, stay private. So I'm kind of the exception. But if you, the pages are, you really have to have a Facebook page to run advertisements on Facebook. So that's the big distinction. But usually what people do is, and like companies have Facebook pages, like Target has a Facebook page, uh, Lowe's and your chiropractor, your doctor's office probably has a Facebook page. So these are just where, where people can go to learn more about your business. So I have a Facebook page, like I said, called Not Your Average Grandma. So anybody can create, as long as you have a Facebook account, you can create a Facebook page. And there's different uh, privileges, uh, features, I will say, on Facebook pages than there is on your personal profile. But I'm not, this is not a training about Facebook. This is, to, I, I just wanted to give you that background because what I learned, these two pages are, and the groups that are associated with them are so cool. So you, as a, as you just, as a Facebook person, you can join these groups. You don't have to be, they, they are uh, run by AARP, which is the American Association of Retired Persons. So it's technically a company that it's a nonprofit that is a, an American company, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to be from the U.S. or an, a member of AARP to be in these groups. It, and and it, you really, when you go into these groups, you don't even know it's AARP because it's just general topics and 
people who are over 50 talking about the things in their lives that are pertinent to them and are important to them. And so that's why I wanted to share it because I said, oh my gosh, I am going to join these groups because I think they'll be really interesting and really fun. Uh, at personally speaking, like I, I can learn stuff. I can connect with people and share things that are going on in my life, uh, and help and maybe be supportive of other people who are going through things. Like, so my mom's in assisted living and there's topics about caring for parents. Uh, a lot of us at this age are caregivers for, for, the, for older parents. Uh, and so it's a way, a way to connect with people who have similar problems. And so that's why, why I really wanted to share this because connecting with like-minded people is I think one of the most important things that we can do uh, to, I, I mean, just the social aspect of a human being and having that social connection with other people. There's studies that say you live longer when you connect with other people. And even if it's virtually, it's, it's still a connection. So, and so what I learned too, is that the, the people who are, have joined these groups. And like I said, they're from all over the world. It's a global group. They're women only, which I also love. People are creating little micro groups and meeting in person and connecting in person. So now that the pandemic's over, we have that opportunity to get together in person again. So keep that in mind too. If you join one of these groups that these people can turn into local friends, if you can connect with people who are local to you. So I joined yesterday and I, I already have seen a couple people that live about within 30 minutes of where I live, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to share with you what these Facebook pages are and the groups that are associated with them. The first one is called the girlfriend. So the girlfriend is geared for a little bit on the younger side. So the Gen Xer crowd, if you're not familiar, I'm sure you've heard the term Gen Xer, but you can Google to see what age the Gen Xers are, but the Gen Xers typically started after the baby boomers and it was about the mid sixties. So if you were born for any time after the mid 1960s, you're a Gen Xer. And so these people are typically at the peak of their professional career, probably thinking about how much time before they retire, definitely thinking about what they need to be prepared for as it, as it relates to retirement, probably have kids uh, in high school or going off to college, maybe even younger kids, but th typically they're facing the empty nest. They could be dealing with parents who are elderly and in, in assisted living or whatever the case may be. Uh, so that's the Gen Xer crowd. Uh, and then the other, so that's, that's the girlfriend. So you can find this Facebook page and follow it at uh, facebook.com slash the girlfriend letter. It's really, you know, the, it's, I guess the girlfriend was taken, but it's, it's the girlfriend letter is actually how you would find it. But if you search the girlfriend, you'll also find it, but it's called, um, it's essentially girlfriend and it's branded girlfriend. If you go there. So that, let me just finish with this one because there's a group that's associated with this and it's the girlfriend book club. So that's the Facebook group. So you can also go to the groups feature on Facebook and search the girlfriend book club and that will come up. The things, the differences between the page and the group, the, the page is where you can find posts that you want to share. You could share those posts. You can interact on a page, um, but it's, it's less personal on, because it's public on a Facebook page. If you go to the group, then it's private. People outside the group can't see those posts as long as it's private group. And these are both private groups and you have to um, request to join in and they'll accept you if you look 
kosher usually you know they don't they don't accept men and they don't accept somebody that looks like it's a fake account so they, they screen people so the girlfriend book club they actually um do books they they vote on a book to read and they do giveaways and you can win books signed books and they also have the author come on and get interviewed live so they do these live sessions with the authors of the books so if you like to read and you like to connect with people about books in general that would be a great uh, group to be in and they also talk about other things besides just books uh, so that's my understanding. I haven't really delved into that particular group yet. I've been in the the older one. Uh, so again, that this is uh, for Gen Xers, and typically they're you know people that are you know fifty over fifty, um, but more on the younger side of the second half of life. Um, and then so the other Facebook page is the girl. Uh, I'm sorry, the Ethel called the Ethel. Uh, and the reason why it's called the Ethel, just a little backstory, is that the founder of ARP was a woman by the name of Ethel Andrus. And uh, she, she was, when she founded the company, it was like, I think six, six, she was in her 60s. Um, and so, yeah, so, so this, the Ethel page um, and the group are really geared for like baby boomer age, um, kind of the over 60 crowd. So these are people that are just dealing with, a, you know, they're, they're where they are in life. Um, more than likely, many are widowed, um, uh, facing uh, potentially going into assisted living or planning for long-term care for themselves. Um, definitely dealing with menopause, uh, definitely dealing with um, if they've lost a partner, dating again uh lots of grown kids and grandkids more in the ethel uh uh group so that the facebook group for the ethel is called um if you want to search for it or the url is facebook.com slash aarp ethel um but you can i found it by searching just the ethel um, and so that's the Facebook group you can follow, uh, Facebook page that you can follow. And then the group that's associated with that page is called the Ethel Circle. So you can search for that. And so I have been really delving into the Ethel, Ethel Circle group. I applied uh, yesterday when I heard about it and I was accepted pretty quickly uh, thereafter which was great because that means they're on the ball, right? They're really paying attention. Uh, and so there's so much activity in the group. Uh, I just started, like I said, digging into it. But some of the posts, uh, well, one today was somebody just posting about, you know, hey, I've se I haven't seen people introduce themselves for a while. So, you know, who's new here? And so a bunch of people were introducing themselves and where they're from. But there was great conversations. One conversation was about, this woman who had a friend who uh, is devastated because she recently lost her husband and she was going through his things, as you do when you lose somebody. And she found letters, love letters from another woman. And she discovered that her husband, who she thought was the perfect husband, had been having an extramarital affair. And he, and both the husband and the woman, and I guess she knew who the woman was because the woman is also deceased. And so there was no way that she could get any information about this relationship because they were both dead, but she could surmise from the letters that he was clearly, there was more, it was more than a friendship. And then I think she found another set of letters too. So it was just, it was more than that one person. And so then the, all the comments were associated with, um, you know, whether you journal and what you do with your journals. And some women said that they had kept some old love letters and they decided to burn them. Um, one said she had had a journal 
uh, from when she was younger and she realized she didn't want her kids to read it because she thought that would some of the things that, she, you know, that maybe the struggles that she had as a young mom, she didn't want them to read that. So she, she threw them all away. Uh, so it's such an interesting uh, post and get you, got you thinking. Another one was someone who has, has lost her husband, who was her soulmate and love of her life. And she liked having that person, that best friend in her life. And so she wanted to get back and start dating again and see if she could create a relationship with somebody. And so she was talking about her online dating experience, which of course everybody's piping in to talk about. Uh, someone else was talking about how her daughter uh, had gotten married and how the family that her daughter married into became family members how her uh, she loved her son-in-law and how for 15 years they did holidays together. They had spent um, time going to the beach together, vacationing together, just really close. And then her son-in-law left her daughter and very quickly met somebody else and, and remarried and how now the family doesn't speak to them. And so they lost these friends. They, they thought they were family and now there's nothing and how she's dealing with the grief associated with that uh, divorce. So that was another topic. So there's all these kind of interesting posts that make you think about your own life, whether you want to keep your journals or do you, when you write your journals, do you worry about what other people think? And if you, if you worry about what other, other people think, can you really be honest in your journals? Can you really speak from the heart and really write what you really think if you're worried about somebody else reading them? What do you do? Because we don't really know. We we could walk out the door and not come back. And so when do you, when do you know it's time to trash your journals? And is there ever a good time to trash trash your journals? And well, do you really uh, want to keep those old love letters? Uh, you know, I think back to you know my, the husband that I'm married to now. I kept a box of some mementos from him, a poem I've written him. Uh, stuff he had sent me. So I had this box. I also have a box from my high school sweetheart. And so that my, my husband now was my college sweetheart and we broke up. And then th my first husband I lived with for 25 years, was married to for 25 years. And then I rekindled with the person who I had his box. <laughs> so, so I would say now my the husband I'm married to doesn't have to worry about finding a box because he was the box. Uh, but if I had died before I rekindled, my ex-husband would have found this box. And how would that have made him feel? But I never got rid of it. So anyways, I, you know, I, I wanted to share this because I think there's such value in learning from other people. And I think there's such value in being a support system to others and for them to be a support system to you and whatever your current needs might be. And it's so funny because these, these obviously these groups are, are filled with strangers. You don't know these strangers, but when you share things that you have in common, it doesn't feel like you're strangers. It's very easy to connect on a very deep level very quickly. And why not? I think it's awesome to be able to do that. I think that is one of the big gifts of the internet. There's a lot of bad things about the internet. And I worry about my grandkids uh, on the internet. But when I think of how it's enriched my life in terms of my business, in terms of my, the students I've met uh, who are complete strangers in terms of just the friendships that I've, I've collected along the way and haven't, haven't met 
95% of them in person. And it's fun when you actually do get to meet them in person. And, it, you know, you just feel like fast friends, like you've, you've known each other, which you have, but you just haven't met. I guess it's similar to, you know, letter writing in the olden days, the pen pals, and then, you know, you're writing long distance. And uh, I remember I was in fourth grade, my, my uh, teacher, uh, her, her fiance went to Vietnam. And so his platoon became, we all had a pen pal from his platoon. So we never met them in person, but we wrote, le every Friday was, we would write letters to our pen pals. And uh, yeah, so it's, I guess it's similar. It's just that we're using the computer instead of the old fashioned letter writing. And so, yeah, so I wanted to share that because when I heard about it, I was super interested in joining these groups and connecting and learning uh, and seeing uh, the conversation and participating in the conversation. Um, like I said, I have a mom in assisted living and I have no, no support system for that. My sister is uh, AWOL. She has nothing to do with me or my mom. And uh, my dad is dead. And uh, my husband has his own mom <laughs> to, to take care of and deal with. So I'm kind of all alone in that uh, journey. And so to have other people that I can ask questions to or bounce ideas off of if I have them or have a need of uh, something, she's in hospice right now. So, uh, you know, don't know what's next, but uh, she was in hospice last year and graduated and and went back into it. So yeah, a lot of things that I never knew until I started to experience them with, with her. So it's, it's a big learning curve. And when you have other people that are resources and have been there and can not only give you some really great advice, um, they can also empathize with you. So that is my lessons learned. My lesson is these groups and how and the value of connecting with like-minded people and really letting it enrich your life. So check them out if you're interested and uh, know that there's no strings attached. So you won't be asked to buy anything. You won't be pressured. And they don't really talk about AARP at all, even though it's, it's a group that really uh, is run by, by that company. So just so you know. All right. Thanks and have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into the Not Your Average Lives podcast. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe on iTunes if you have an Apple device. You can find free resources and learn what else I have going on at the moment that might interest you on my website at notyouraveragegrandma.com. You can also find me on Instagram or Facebook at Not Your Average Grandma. If you liked this episode, it would make my heart so happy if you could leave me a five-star rating. You can also add a review to let me know what you like about this podcast, which will help spread the word about it to others who need a little midlife inspiration. As always, be you, listen to your inner voice, and focus on reigniting that lost spark so you can start living your own, not your average life.